In the last video, we went over how we can essentially turn Houdini into a graphing calculator. And that was just an introduction into how we can set that up. In this video, we're gonna be going over a little bit more complex functions. And in the next video, we're gonna be going over some even cooler stuff. So let's go ahead and jump on in here. We're gonna create this heart to start off with. So that's what we'll be doing here. Let's go ahead, jump into our geometry node. I'm going to create a copy of this just to save this for later so we can kind of look at where we came from and where we end up. So what we need to do here is basically we're going to use the same functions that we created in the last video and we're going to just change our Y position here and do a couple of other things, including creating a line between each one of these points. So let's go ahead and set up the function here. So for the heart function, we're gonna do the square root of the absolute value of X, and we're gonna do plus the square root of one minus x squared, which to do that in Houdini will be the power function. So P-O-W, x is what we're gonna be squaring. And we're gonna set that equal to two. And if I hit control and enter now to run the code, you see we got our uh, basic of the top heart getting set up here. But we also have these other points, which we don't really want. And if we look here at our grid, you can see that they pretty much line up to negative one and one. So we wanna set our bounds to that. So we'll do negative one in our X min and one in our X max. And now that we've used our grid, we can go ahead and turn that off. And I'm also going to set the background to dark because that may help you guys see a little bit better. And let's go ahead and just up the step size here as well. So let's set that to 0.01. And now we get a much nicer heart. If I were to increase this, you'd see it get more, less and less detailed, I should say. Don't wanna go too low, but let's set this back to 0 0.01, or too high, I should, I should say. Now we need to create the bottom of our heart as well. So we're just gonna do the same thing that we did right here. We're gonna do it in the same for loop. Now we do need to change one thing. Let's go ahead and cure my OCD. Let's go ahead, we're gonna change this plus to a minus, and that's going to create the bottom of our heart here. So now if I hit control and enter, I'm gonna run the code, and you see that we have our heart created, which is pretty freaking sweet. Now, if I pull up the point numbers here, we're going to need to look at these in order to create the line between our points. So if I look at the top half of our heart, you see that it goes zero, two, four, six, eight. So it's increasing by two. Hopefully you guys can see that. And on the bottom, it goes zero, three, five, seven. And our one point, our point with the uh, point number of one is in the exact same spot as the point number zero. So it's increasing by two on the bottom as well as on the top. And that's gonna be important for our next attribute wrangle. Go ahead and drop in an attribute wrangle. This is going to be how we create the line going around our heart. And we're going to keep that on points because we want to run over every single point. And the way that we create a line between points is using the add prim function. Let's do add prim and then we're going to create it on itself. So geo self. And then we want to create a line. So we'll do poly line. And then we want to define the point numbers that we want to connect. And let me turn these points back on real quick. And I'll have to reset the display flag here. So if I look back here, you see we go 0, 2, 4, 6. So we want to increase by 2 in our attribute wrangle here. Go ahead and set it back there. So we'll do at PT num to get our first point. And then we're going to do at PT num. And we're gonna add to like I said. And once I run this code, you see that we have a line going through our heart. But we got just a couple of issues going on here. 
which we'll fix in just a second. First one, if I zoom in here, you see on our last point, it is not being connected. And that's because it hits 400 and there is no 402 to jump to, and it hits 401 and there is no 403 to jump to. It's not gonna jump from 400 to 401. Now we could define that um, like explicitly. Uh, explicitly would be uh, defining 400 as our first point, 401 as our second. But if we increased or decreased the resolution of our heart, that would no longer connect the last two points. So we need to find the max point, which is going to be an integer because it doesn't have a decimal place. So we'll do I at, and we'll just name it max point. And we're going to set that equal to the number of points in our object minus one. So if we have 401 as our last point, it's not counting point zero. So that'd be 402 points total. So that's why we need to subtract one to get the last point here. That'll make a little bit more sense here in a second, but to find the number of points in our object, you do in points, and then we just set that to zero. And like I said, we want to do negative one or minus one to get uh, 401 as our last point. And now we just do the same thing we did up here. So add prem, let me actually, I'm just gonna copy this line of code and we'll just change this at PT num to at max point because that would give us our max point, which would be 402. And which now that I'm thinking about that, that doesn't really make sense but it works to so do max point. Oh yeah, yeah, sorry, max point. Getting lost in my in my own code here. So max point would be 401 because that's what we set it to. So it's got the number of points, which was 402. We subtracted one from it already to get 401. And then we wanna do max point minus one again to connect our object, which didn't work because I didn't type it in correctly. And now you see that we have the points connected. And now if I go in here and change our resolution, we'll do 0 0.009. It's still connecting the points here. If I set it to 0 0.001, get a lot more points, but it's still connecting the last two points, which is what we were looking for. No matter how I change this, it's connecting the last two points, even if it no longer looks like a heart. So I said, you need to make sure it has enough resolution. 0 0.001 does a pretty good job of giving you the right resolution. And now if we wanna create a object out of this, we can do a polyfill. Wire that up, take a look, and it gives us an error. Let's go ahead and set that to single polygon. And right away we have another issue. And basically what this issue is, is we have our zero and one points sitting on top of each other right here. That's why it is being connected. Let's go ahead, we'll drop in a fuse node right here and that just fixes it. And let's go ahead, reverse the patch. And now we have our heart. And we can do a poly extrude if I can type. And if I up the distance on this, let's do like five, not 54, but like five, we could twist this around if we wanted, get a nice, interesting shape, something kind of cool, whatever you want to do. But ultimately this gives us our heart shape, which is pretty cool. Good change, however you want. But anyways, that is kind of the basics of the heart function. I urge you to try and mess around with other functions inside of Houdini, see if you can get them figured out. There is a bunch of functions inside of math that can create some interesting shapes. So play around with those so you can get some cool things. In the next video, we are going to be taking a look at a way more complex graph. So it's gonna be definitely like an expert level 
of, of math looking at, but I'll try to make it as, as easy as I can. So stay tuned for that. But like I said, I uh, got a bunch of other videos on my channel inside of Houdini that deal with Houdini. So make sure you check those out as well. If you're interested in those, I do also have some videos on Cinema 4D, Redshift, Clarice as well. And if you would like the project files for this project, as well as a bunch of other uh, project files that I have on my channel, make sure you go to my channel membership and select the tier two option that will get you all of my project files that I have uploaded. And you can download those, take a look at those and run through how I created all the different scenes that I have up. So anyways, hopefully this helps you out. You're finding it interesting. And like I said, stay tuned for the next video because it's gonna get really a lot more complex than this one. But anyways, thank you guys for watching and have a good day.